I think they're going through a sort of an existential crisis about do they want to be recognized by the international community as being a legitimate government? The president of the United States is now running cover for the Taliban. So I guess we're the PR wing for the Taliban now. That's exciting. The Pentagon spokesperson, by the way, Ned Price, he can't, or John Kirby, rather, he can't even say how many Americans are even in Afghanistan at this point. How many Americans, uh, American citizens remain in, in Afghanistan? I don't know. The State Department would be a better place to go for an estimate of how many Americans are Afghanistan or in and around Kabul. That is not a figure that the United States military would would know. And, um, and I think, as you also know, not every American citizen in another country, uh, uh, th there's no obligation that they register their presence uh, and and that we and that you can have a, a perfect, accurate count. OK, in order to make anybody believe that the Biden administration has any level of control, the Biden administration has now been put in the position of becoming the PR wing for the Taliban. This is not a surprise. You saw that the Biden, the Obama administration did the exact same thing with Iran. Obama came into office wanting Iran to be established as a sort of regional power for no reason at all, because, again, he had perverse foreign policy ideas that made no sense in the real world. And so what this meant is he wanted to cut a deal with the Taliban, uh, with, with, the, with the Iranians. So he lied to the American people. And so did Ben Rhodes, his national security advisor. They just lied. They, they, they went out there and they said that there was a moderate wing of the Iranians and we were emboldening the moderate wing of the Iranian government. And then we spent years defending the Iranian government. Oh, really, they're moderate. Oh, really, they're moderating. Oh, really, they're getting better. Oh, you know, they're, they're really not so bad. Is there anything really to worry about? I mean, they, they, like, they're going to get better, guys. I mean, they want to be legitimate players on the world stage. We became the PR wing for the Iranian mullahs, even as they fostered terrorism around the region, even as they murdered tens of thousands of people in places like Syria and Lebanon and Yemen, even as they funded Hamas, right? It was the United States and Barack Obama's administration who are soft peddling the evils of the Iranian regime. Now we're doing the exact same thing with the Taliban because you see, in order to make Americans believe everything is going to be okay in Afghanistan, we have to believe that the Taliban are a different sort of Taliban. Maybe they're changing their stripes. You know, no guarantees, but maybe they're going to be better this time around. Now, is there any evidence whatsoever, like at all, that they're better this time around? They're literally just shooting people. They're going around and hunting journalists. They pledged the same thing in 96 when they first took over Afghanistan that they have now, which is pardon for everybody. And then by pardon, they mean you will be dead. I mean, that, that's basically what they mean. But you've now turned the White House of the United States into a PR wing for the worst people on earth, the same way that Obama did with the Iranians. So here, for example, is the president of the United States, Joe Biden, saying, you know, the Taliban, they're probably going through some sort of existential crisis right now. Uh, you know, they, they have to decide whether they want to be part of the international community. Here's the thing. They've already decided. The answer is no. And they are not going through an existential crisis. The West is going through an existential crisis because the West has no idea what it believes. The West doesn't know what it stands for, aside from the evils of supposed inherent white supremacy embedded in all of our institutions and transgenderism. The, the West has, has basically very few principles to which it is certainly committed at this point. We don't know what we stand for. We don't know why we stand for the things we stand for. We are going through an existential crisis. The Taliban are going through a victory dance because a bunch of regressive barbaric cavemen from the 8th century just defeated the most powerful military in the history of the world. By the way, for the second time, right? Because they did this to the Soviets in the 80s. So now they're, they're proclaiming victory on the exact same thing, even though really the, the two instances shouldn't be comparable. The United States was holding the line in Afghanistan with 2,500 troops. The difference is the Taliban have a 1,000-year time horizon, and we have about a 20-year time horizon in the United States. We get bored after 20 years, and we're like, oh, well, this is an endless war. You know what an endless war means to the Taliban? You know what an endless war means to the people in Afghanistan? Afghanistan has essentially been in a state of war since at least 1979. So an endless war to them does not look like an endless war to us. And so they can declare victory after having their asses kicked all over the map for 20 years because they outlasted us. Okay, but in any case, Joe Biden has now become the PR wing for the Taliban. This is what he has to do now. I think they're going through a sort of an existential crisis about do they want to be recognized by the international community as being a legitimate government? I'm not sure they do. But look, they have... They, they care about their beliefs more. Well, they do. But they also care about whether they have food to eat, whether they have an income that can make any money and run an economy. They care about whether or not they can hold together the society that they, in fact, say they care so much about. What an absolute joke. The president of the United States. There he is. They, they, they want legitimacy. And the same way the Hamas wants legitimacy, guys. It's a, all these terrorist groups, they just want legitimacy. 
The president of the United States is now running cover for the Taliban. That's the only thing you can take away from that clip. I, I'm not sure that they want legitimacy, but you know they do want to make sure that they can run the economy. They want to make sure, I mean, wouldn't they want to be welcomed into the family of nations? By the way, it's this exact same sort of arrogance that led to a lot of the nation building project in the first place. They're just like us guys. They want to make sure that their, that their country still runs. They have the same priorities we do. John Kirby at the Pentagon was specifically asked whether the Biden administration considers the Taliban an enemy. Now, this should have a pretty obvious answer. The answer is yes. The Taliban are the worst people on the planet. The Taliban are responsible for thousands of Americans' deaths. The Taliban are going around murdering our allies. Yes, they are our enemy. They've continued to be our enemy. But because Joe Biden just surrendered to them, he now has to say that it's not a surrender by pretending they're not our enemy. So that's what John Kirby does here. He just avoids the question as to whether the Taliban are our enemy. Does the U.S. military con consider the Taliban an enemy? Uh, we're our focus right now. Uh, the, the the thing we're 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 working against right now is is time and space, and we want to get as many people out of Kabul as we can uh, in as little amount of time as we can. That is called a not answer at all. The question was, are the Taliban our enemy? And the answer was, we're trying to get Americans out. So I guess we're the PR wing for the Taliban now. That's exciting. In a second, we'll get to what Joe Biden's calculus here is, because it's pretty obvious what his calculus is why he's doing all of this and what his angle here is. Because you look at this and I look at this and we say this is the worst foreign policy disaster of the last 40 years, at least since the fall of Iran in 79. Maybe since the end of World War II, considering it's so self-inflicted. I mean, at least when Iran fell, we really had very little to do with it. Well, when it comes to this, we are the complete cause of it. This is the, I think it's the worst foreign policy disaster for America. Man, I, I, I honestly, I, I'm hard pressed to think of a worse foreign policy. The end of Vietnam was not even as much of a foreign policy disaster as this is. Truly. We're in a battle for the culture and for our values. Like and subscribe to help keep our videos on the front line of the fight and top of your feed.